G'day, welcome to another Curriculum Burst. Here's an algebra question for high schoolers. It goes as follows, a little bit strange. For how many integers n is n over 20 minus n the square of an integer? All right, hang on, so n over 20 minus n. I want to know for how many integers n, so how many values of n, does this thing turn out to be a square of an integer, like a square number, 1, 4, 9, 16 or something? The reason I'm sort of saying this question is a bit strange, it's a little bit scary in the sense that this looks like a fraction. I don't think it's even an integer. So I'm a little bit nervous about this. How can this even be an integer, yellow and a square number? Well, I guess the only thing I can do is like try some stuff, get a feel for it. For example, um, maybe a very obvious thing to put in is n equals 1, and out comes 1 over 19. Yep, my suspicion's right. It's not even an integer. It's a fraction, yellow and a square integer. Uh, n equals 2 gives me 2 over 18, which is 1 ninth. Again, not even an integer, yet alone a square. So um, I'm a little bit nervous about this. Maybe this is basically always going to be fractions. But let me try doing something extreme. In fact, you know, I could build my way up. But let's go to something really extreme, like n equals 1,000 or something, a big number, or a million, or 10 million. Then I see something else is going on. I get, what, 1,000 over 20 minus 1,000, negative 9980, probably got that wrong. But I see, hmm, it's actually negative. And there's no way that's even going to be a square number, because all square numbers are positive. So even like a thousand is kind of odd. Um, in fact, I can see if I did really big numbers. You're right. Um, I can see in my mind that I've got some big number over 20 minus big number. It's always going to be negative. So for the really big numbers, not going to work. So I'm doing strategy number 10 here, which is obviously go to extremes. The extremes of the big numbers tells me things aren't working. But there's other extremes I can go as well. For example, way down low, like n equals 0. Put in 0, I get 0 over 20, which is 0, which actually technically is a square number. <laughs> so there's one that works. Oh, about n equals negative 1. Then I get uh, what is it? negative 1 over 21. No, it's a fraction and it's a negative, double problems. In fact, I can see now any negative integer will be negative over positive is not going to work. Huh. But I have seen that one number works. Um, in fact, I can also see another extreme, like n equals 20 is kind of interesting for this formula because I'll get 20 over 0, which is just bad in general, it's not even a number. All right, I feel like by looking at these extremes, I can't be too big, I can't be negative, I have a feeling 20 is kind of interesting. For things beyond 20, get me into the negatives. So I have a feeling my only hope are going to be numbers between 0 and 20. So maybe we can get some more square numbers. We've got one. Maybe that's it. I don't know. But maybe there's others. But I can't help it. I'm going to do one right now. 10. 10 is calling to me for some reason. The middle number. Is that helpful? 10 over 10 is 1. That's a square number. We've got two of them. All right, we have a strategy now. I love this. So now I can just check the numbers from 0 to 20. Then I can just think about it and actually see how I can avoid some more work. But we've got at least two numbers that give us squares. Maybe there's more. Maybe that's it. But I feel like I can now check. In fact, why don't you check? Check the numbers twixt 1 and 20. See if you can find any more squares. Count how many there are in total. And we'll have this problem solved. All right, give it a go. And then when you get an answer, check the answer that goes with this essay. It goes, goes, the essay that goes with this video. Excuse me. All right, cool stuff. Kind of interesting. Thanks. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.